As always, if you have any questions during the presentation or you need something to be repeated, um, feel free to raise your virtual hand and uh, we will address your questions either in the course of the presentation or at the end. Um, so again, thank you for joining this morning and I'm hoping that in the next uh, 30 to 45 minutes we can take you on a walkthrough of the OS.org wiki website and uh, demystify some of the links and uh, clarify how to navigate and where to find things on the wiki that might be important to you. So we'll go ahead and jump in. Um, Sarah Basso, our Executive Director, and Samantha Groves, our Project Manager, are also on this webinar. And uh, we'll be transferring the screen to them at a certain point uh, so that they can go through their particular areas of concentration. Um, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and get started on the front page of the wiki. Um, we've gotten a, a couple of questions. How do I find things? Where is everything? So just getting started, um, you'll notice at the very top of the OS.org wiki we have a banner. And it is a banner ad and we do uh, provide opportunities for some companies to purchase space on the advertising uh, banner and we rotate these banners. Right now uh, we're trying to use these primarily to promote OWASP Foundation activities and you can see that the the one that's showing now is for AppSec Research, our European conference which is coming up in August in Hamburg, Germany. So if you click on the link to the banner in good time it'll take you to the uh, particular web page for that conference. So whatever banners you see up there, they do provide click-through opportunities. Okay. So again, um, I understand my screen was frozen, so here we go. Just click on the banner ad and it takes you to the particular event site or um, the customer site, whoever might have purchased that particular banner ad. Um, over on the left-hand navigation pane um, is a series of links, and from looking at them, it may or may not be intuitive what they're for. Um, of course, home is back to the home page, so anywhere you are on the OWASP website, that navigation pane exists and you can always click home to go back. Also the uh, image up at the upper left hand corner is also a hyperlink back to the home page. The link underneath that is about OWASP and I get a lot of inquiries about who's on the board, what's your address, do you have a fax machine, how do I get in touch with dot 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 um, this particular page about OWASP is intended to answer all those questions. You can see that on this page we have our <laughs> we have our our mission statement. We have links to our bylaws. Uh, we are a five one c three and the foundation bylaws are reviewed annually and these are the rules that we adhere to when running our organization. And I'm sorry for the delay I'm on a Windows machine. <clears throat> we also have We also have links to the OWASP Foundation core values, our purpose, our code of ethics, and our principles. We have links to the global board members. So who's on the OWASP board? Here you go. And their email addresses, how to get in touch with them, where they're from, and what their role is within the organization. 
uh, listed below that, we have all of the employees of the organization. Sarah, the executive director, me, Kelly, Santa Lucia, Samantha, and Allison Schrader, and Matt Tesaro, and how to get in touch with us. Um, the OS Foundation is part of our uh, bylaws. Uh, the board meets every month. Those meetings are open. And on this, in the meeting minutes, you can find links to the board meeting minutes and the agendas. Uh, going back to forever. Also, the staff meets on a monthly basis, and you can find links to the agendas and the discussions that the staff has been having about uh, how to operationally manage some of the issues that have been going on in the organization. So if there's a particular issue that is of concern to you, you can check out on the board meeting minutes or the staff meeting minutes to find out if that's being addressed or not. Um, one of the goals that we're working on is to try to move these to um, some more discussion pages. So we're definitely interested in feedback on how you uh, how you might feel about that. Um, because we are open and one of our core values is to be radically open, um, you'll find links to the foundation budgets uh, for 2011, 2012, 2013, and ongoing um, until the end of time. Um, underneath that are some operational procedures. Uh, so if you have a question about is there a rule? Is there a definition? How do I do this? That's where you would go for that. Um, below that is information on our licensing, information on participation and membership, and on and on and on. Um, also tax filings. There's questions. What is your tax ID number? Um, we are a tax deductible organization, so you chapter leaders, um, if you need to make a purchase for your particular chapter and it's going to be linked back, it is very possible that that could be tax deductible or um, tax free. So please reach out uh, to one of the staff to get some information, but our federal tax ID number is up there uh, for the U.S. And below that you'll find information, address, fax number, and a contact us link for the U.S. and the European entities. So that's the About Us page. It's a, it's a pretty meaty page that provides a lot of details on the organization itself. Um, below that is AppSec Conferences, and Sarah Basso in just a few minutes is going to go through, um, through that particular link in great detail, including the How to Host a Conference page. Underneath that is a link to our chapters. Um, hopefully, as you know, the foundation has uh, 250, 260 chapters located all over the world. What we've done here is we've chunked them out by geographic regions. And if you click on a particular region, it will further list out the different chapters. Um, as you can see in, in, in Europe, in the, in the UK, we have a pretty, pretty heavy uh, representation. Um, but we're also in... Uh, less reach places like uh, Latvia and Croatia um, and you can do that for any of the any of the local chapters so you chapter leaders also um, hopefully you've been on this page and you can see how to start a chapter uh, the information that's required for a new chapter how that works how to bring speakers. We have the program OWASP on the Move, which is linked from here. And then there's a lot of great information here that's tagged as chapter support materials, but it's not just applicable to local chapters. There's links to the chapter leader handbook, of course, but there's also the reimbursement request form that we use for anybody who um, has an expense that needs to be re reimbursed. Um, there's a detailed listing of the U.S. and the European uh, spending. It's uh, basically a QuickBooks report that gets downloaded and posted on at least a monthly basis. So if you're wondering what chapters are spending their money on, it's all listed right there. Um, 
there are links to uh, GoToMeeting and GoToWebinar. Uh, we do have the GoToMeeting, GoToWebinar available to anybody in the OWASP Foundation. So if you're a chapter leader and you want to host a virtual meeting, um, please reach out and, and get the logins and passwords and schedule your meeting. And we have that as a service available to the global community. Um, there's a link to previous presentations. There's uh, news item templates, chapter promotion tips. And I know that um, one of the things that Samantha is going to talk about is a marketing page, which I think everybody will find pretty valuable. Um, there's also a way to order chapter branded supplies. So this particular form is intended for bulk orders, uh, things like t-shirts, pens, um, if you need a banner, if you, um, if you need something that's OWASP branded uh, for a meeting, for a group, for an outreach event, this is where you would go to request that information or request those materials rather. And then as I said, Samantha is going to go through the marketing. It's uh, nicely branded marketing stuff. Um, below chapters is a link to downloads. As you know, projects, and Samantha's going to talk about this too, but projects have a lot of um, publications, tools that you can use. Um, so if there's anything in particular, they're listed out here by the project, um, items that are available for download. Um, this is one of my favorite links, which is a link to the OWASP org mailing list. Um, if you're interested in a particular topic or if you want to know what's going on in the OWASP Atlanta chapter, you can click on any one of these mailing lists and sign up to join and then you'll be included in any correspondence that um, in the case of Atlanta would be going out about chapter meetings. So if you're looking to, um, if, if you're moving, if you're going to another location, if you are interested in Ajax or anti-malware or anti-SAMI, you can just click on this, join up on the mailing list, and you're included in the conversation. So you can post also to um, other OWASPers. The membership page. A lot of times I get questions, how do I sign up for membership? What is membership? What do I get from my membership? Um, you know, what is, a, what is a chapter supporter? What is an honorary member? What is an academic supporter? The link to membership provides all that information. It has, um, has this grid here that outlines the various levels of membership um, and the benefits associated with each one of those. If applicable, there's a link to a web page that provides additional description on that particular um, benefit. So the first, the first grid is for membership, and below that are other ways to support OWASP as a local chapter supporter, single meeting supporter, tax deductible donation, um, with links to the registration forms for all of those. And of course, this is also on our homepage, but it's uh, the listing of all of our current corporate supporters and academic supporters. Then we have a news feed and this is a collection of this is a collection of blogs. Uh, it's a opt-in um, but it's the OWASP moderated news feed. The next link is a link to OWASP books. And a lot of times I get questions, how do I get a copy of the top 10? How do I get a copy of the code review? Where do I get this? Um, we've published all of our books in collaboration with Lulu. Um, so all of these are downloadable. Um, they're free. Uh, they're the books. If you 
have a need for a print copy, we do have a relationship with a vendor who can do bulk printing. Um, so if you need uh, these for marketing or for your chapter meeting or whatever, please feel free to reach out to us um, or to contact Lulu individually to uh, get information on how to get the books. Um, and then if you want to show your OWASP pride, um, but not necessarily for a chapter meeting and say, you realize it's time to get a new laptop bag or it's time to get a new casual Friday polo shirt. Uh, we have a relationship with a local company um, referred to us through our Austin chapter um, who has agreed to provide us this storefront for OWASP branded materials. Um, I know personally this bag is, is incredible. The backpack is incredible. Um, they were giving out these as speaker gifts for the USA conference in Austin last year. If there's an item that you need that's not listed here, um, you can reach out to Rocksport or any one of the staff and we can help you get connected and, and get you what you need. But that's that's pretty nice. and. They do offer discounts for bulk orders. So if you are a chapter leader and you're looking to get some materials for your chapter, you can actually order the OWASP shirts here with a logo that indicates OWASP Austin, OWASP Atlanta, OWASP Luxembourg. Um, so they'll, they'll individually brand these for your local chapter. Another one of my favorite pages is the OF Initiatives page. Um, this is your single point of focus for uh, how to get involved with the organization. Um, down here we have all of our volunteer listings. These are links to individual pages um, that identify opportunities to get involved within the organization. If you are in a project or you're working on something and you need some help from the community, you can start your own initiative. Um, this big globe is a link to a form that you just fill out and then your job will be posted as an opportunity for the community to step up and help you out. This is also where we post the recordings for the webinars and um, for the recordings of the webinars that we've already had. And these are broken out by areas of focus. So if there's something that you're particularly interested, if you're only interested in finding what's available at projects, um, how to start a project, the different kinds of projects, um, you can sign up for a project initiative. And this will just list out the project initiatives for you. But to get a full listing, then you can click on um, the links on the footer of the page, which is to view all of the volunteer opportunities. So this will list out every single opportunity that exists at the moment uh, to get involved with the OAS Foundation. And OWASP projects, I will skip that and leave that to Samantha. Um, this link right here is linked to previous presentations, um, templates, presentation templates, um, various topics. These are all links to presentations that have been given by other chapter leaders at chapter meetings, at conferences, um, individuals in outreach events. Um, so if you're looking for some materials, if you yourself need to give a presentation, um, that's, this is a good resource for you to have a look and see um, what might have already been done that you can take advantage of. And we have a link to press, um, which lists out some press releases, some news, the OWASP events, links to the conference page, which Sarah will talk about. We have some videos um, that have been posted 
um, highlighted on this page is the AppSec video tutorial series that Jerry Hoff's putting together as part of his project. Um, it's outstanding. Um, also, our conference talks are um, they're recorded and or videoed, so this is a place that you can go to tap into some of the presentations. If there's three tracks at a conference and you only have time, of course, to go to one at a time, you can check out the information here and um, take advantage of some things you might have missed. And then, of course, the last link here is another link to the volunteer page, which lists out all of the different opportunities uh, to step in and participate with the OS Foundation. Okay, so just real quick, um, and then I'll turn it over to Samantha. Below that are some reference links, um, how to, um, how to, how to do things, code snippets. Uh, there's a glossary of terms. Um, we, in, in an attempt to be international, global organization that we are, you can also, of course, change the language. And then there's a toolbox here. Um, uh, if you need to upload files, um, if you want to see what edits have been made, um, the special pages uh, gives you some information on some things that uh, have been done to the wiki, on the wiki, um, uh, sort of a table of contents. And depending on what level of security you have with your login on the wiki, you may or may not have access to all of these. Um, but hopefully that de demystifies this navigation pane. And I will do my best now to transfer, transfer the screen to Samantha. Hello. There we are. Show my screen. Apologies, we're just changing screens really quickly. Can you see my screen, Kate? Yes, you can. Perfect. So hello everyone, I'm just going to take you briefly through our OWASP projects page and then I'll briefly touch on the marketing page that we currently put together on the wiki. Um, so just going through the welcome page really quickly. Um, the way you find the OWASP projects page is through the navigation as Kate uh, mentioned earlier. Um, you just scroll down to where OWASP projects link is, click on that and it'll take you to this page. So the welcome page really has just links to the project handbook, for example, uh, the project inventory, uh, call to action for, for contacting us um, down here. If you just scroll down, it has donation links, it has project of the month, and it also has a link to the initiative page that Kate just went through um, here on the side panel. And of course, it also has a link to uh, one of our biggest uh, conferences for this year, the AppSec USA conference. And it also has links to our different social media accounts that we're currently using as well. Uh, so it's a pretty robust page in general, so I'll try to, to keep it short because I know it will probably take a bit of time to go through it and read through all the different details and the different topics as well. And of course, you're more than welcome to email me and ask me any questions if something wasn't made clear today. So now moving towards the starting a new project page. So this has all sorts of information on how to start your new OWASP project. Um, here you'll find project recommendations, license recommendations, and you'll also find links to all of the forms we have in the project's infrastructure that are really there to just help you make queries or start a process with projects. Um, the way you start a new project is you go down to the creating a new project section here and you click on the here's the simple process for starting a new project link. So I'll just click on that so you'll see. And this takes you to the project new project application form. Uh, so the way this works is you fill out the form with all of your different details and you submit the application. Once you submit the application, it sends me an email and it goes into our incubator application form. Or, or spreadsheet, if you will. Um, and after seven days, after the community reviews this for seven days and there's no issues and they'll probably ask you questions, detailed questions about what you want to do with your project. Um, if no one has an issue with it and if it qualifies, you know, if it's, it's something that we're, we're doing, it has to be, of course, information security related, then we'll start setting up your new project after the seven days. You'll probably get an email from me 
um, with all of your new details, you know, your, how to set up your wiki page, etc., with your new wiki page address, your mailing list, all the different things you'll need, the, the standard things you'll need to run your project. And I'll just scroll down so you can see, for example, the OWASP recommended licenses. It has information on funding your project and, of course, all of the project process forms. Now we'll move on to the project assessment tab. So this tab has information on the different project stages and our OS project lifecycle. It's a pretty meaty page as well, so I'll let you guys have a read uh, on that. I won't go through everything in detail because there is quite a bit of information. Um, it really explains in detail the different types of reviews available currently and also how to start the process for each as well. So I'll just scroll down for a little bit to see, to let you see the stage benefits, for example. We currently have project graduation and the criteria we use to assess your, your projects or your releases. Okay, now moving on to the project inventory tab. This is where we have a list of all of our active and non-active projects on record. Uh, you can also find another up-to-date record of the inventory on the, on the welcome page. And I'll just go back to the welcome page really quick to show you. It's right here, where you can find projects separated, in, separated into their project stages, so incubator labs and flagship projects. And I'll just scroll down so you can have a look too. Here are all of our labs projects and our incubators. And then down below are the inactive projects, the current inactive projects. Okay. So now just moving on, I'll skip through the marketing materials tab and I'll just go through the, to the terminology. I'll, I'll touch on the marketing materials tab at the end. And so moving on to the terminology section. Uh, the terminology tab has a list of definitions that are associated with all of our OWASP projects. I know internally we use words and phrases that might not be very self-explanatory to the members of the community. Uh, so this is just a really easy way for people in the OWASP community to get caught up on the different phrases that we use to describe different uh, parts of the OWASP project infrastructure. So if you just go down the list, it'll take you through all the different definitions. Okay, so the Sponsors and Donations tab. Uh, this is where people can donate either funds or tools, platforms, etc. to our OS projects infrastructure. Uh, the OS Sponsored section is really reserved for organizations who provide sponsorship to an OS project or to the OS Global Projects infrastructure in general. And of course, there's a link here where you can donate that'll take you to our donations portal. And this is also on the welcome page down at the bottom. Help support our OS projects donate here. It takes you to the same area. So that's our sponsorship and donations page. And now we'll go to the PM information tab. So this is where you can find more information on who I am, uh, what I'm currently working on, and my quarterly objectives. And you can also find all of my reports linked on this page as well. So if you scroll down, you'll find all the different reports that I've created since I've started working at OWASP. I create one every week, and I also create one every month for board meetings. And you can find links to them here. And we also have links as well um, that gives project leaders or anyone in the community different bits of information on our project funding. So. Essentially, it lets you know how much a particular project has at this point in time in their budget. And these are my quarterly objectives, and this is how to contact me. This link takes you to the Contact Us form for all of us. And the Contact Us form is just a repeat. It gives you a link to the Contact Us form where you can, um, oops, where you can, um, contact any of the staff and of course when you're on the contact us form just make sure if you want to contact me to list projects as your uh, subject. And I'll just go briefly through the marketing materials tab. I know this is a copy of a marketing materials 
uh, a marketing page on the wiki, but I'm not quite sure where that lives. Uh, so I just created a, a copy, like I said, to make sure that we had access to this and we could find it easily uh, for the project leaders. Um, so I'll just go briefly through it. So it goes through the philosophy of how we're going to use our marketing, our brand usage rules at the current uh, moment for OWASP. It has the social media links again. Uh, this is where you can find the different social media uh, accounts that we're currently using, the most up-to-date ones. Uh, the resources section has links to where you can download different uh, pieces of collateral that are OS branded at the moment. Um, it has the OS logo toolkit where you can find different uh, file types of our OS logo excuse me, the OS business card template, you can get files again with different file formats that you can use to customize the OS business card for chapter leaders and project leaders. Um, the ads and the flyers, uh, this is where you can download different, uh, different creative, when it comes to, you know, for example, A4, standard brand, you know, print ready uh, collateral when it comes to flyers and banners as well. Um, different banners that you can use at conferences or whatever events that you're currently participating in. You're more than welcome to use those. And we also have our presentations. I believe these are, yes, these are the board presentations that you can download and view as well. They should be in PDF format. And down here too, we just have links and a just short description of Jim Manico's security podcast. You can visit the podcast page just to get more information. And of course, as Kate mentioned before, the OS AppSec tutorial series with uh, Jerry Hoff. I'll just take you really quickly to the podcast, and this is where you can find all the previous shows that Jim's put together. And I won't take you through the, the AppSec tutorial series, as Kate's already touched on that, but this is just where you can find all these different bits of information and links that are marketing related as well. And that's it for me. I'm changing the presenter to you, Kate, now. Uh, to Sarah. Oh, to Sarah. Okay, and here is Sarah Bay, so I'm going to be speaking about conferences. Hi, everyone. Um, give us just one minute while we get the screen transferred. All right. Kate, can you see it? I can. Hopefully okay, great. Everybody else can too. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, um, good morning or good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Um, so, for the conferences, uh, as Kate pointed out, um, uh, when you go to the OWASP homepage on the left hand um, navigation bar, if you click on AppSet Conferences, it will take you to. Um, this page that has a listing of the different events that OWASP is involved with. So it starts out with our global AppSec events and that is our right now four um, largest events of the year um, that are our fundraisers for the OWASP Foundation but also our global um, conferences to do outreach to the communities and um, bring bring people into our community and educate them about the community as well as rally people that are already involved. Next we have um, local and regional events um, that are happening around the globe. Um, you'll see on here we also have like the European tour that's going on right now um, and several other events. Um, below that, we have partner and promotional events. So this is these are non-OWASP events, but events where OWASP will have a presence, um, such as a booth, um, or we have some sort of promotional um, or partner agreement, um, barter and trade with, where we're um, we're doing some advertisement through them and they're doing it through us, um, or we have um, discounts to attend their conference. So if you have questions about OWASP involvement in any of these events or the extent of it, um, you can always, there's a link right here that says contact us um, and you certainly can reach out at any time um, to ask questions about that. 
um, this page um, is automatically or is updated with a script that's generated, or I guess wiki code that's generated from the OWASP conference management system. And you'll see here the link to the OWASP conference management system, which is the place where we request that um, OWASP community members or anyone that wants to host an OWASP event or be engaged in a partner or a promotional event, it all goes through this portal. And the purpose of that um, is for us to track where, where the OWASP brand is um, being used and also to provide metrics to us on in previous years if we um, had a presence at RSA last year or two years ago or ISSA or when the last time we had AppSec DC was. This is a central place for us to manage all of that information as well as who our contacts are um, and kind of what's going on at any current time. So we ask that any of you enter your information into this um, this portal and I will walk you through that um, in just a minute. I want to just get back to the AppSec page um, to point out a few other things that are on this page. Um, down below you'll see the category pages. There's um, links to many um, or most of our past events um, wiki pages. So you can hopefully find resources or information about past events at, um, there. Um, the other thing is, let's see. Okay, so I will go to um, the um, OWASP event management system and show you how that works. Um, up here in the upper right hand column, if you don't currently have an account or haven't set it up, you can click register. Um, assuming you do, um, you just log in. And then you'll see any events that you have submitted would be up here um, under your events. I currently don't have any events set up under this account that I logged in with. Um, and you can see a list of upcoming events and you can click on those events to see information um, about the event, um, who the local planning team is, when the event is, um, name of the venue, um, status, um, when it was submitted, all that information. Um, if you are ready to submit your event, I'll just quickly walk you through that. Um, you'll click submit and then you'll see a list of the different types of events and um, you select the type of event. If you're holding a local event, for example, you would select that radio button and then enter these, this information um, the best that you can. Um, we definitely understand that sometimes at the time of the beginning of the planning process, details um, are not final, so enter your best estimate. You can always go back and update it. Um, this will just give us a starting place for your planning. Um, And so once you enter the event, um, I live in San Francisco, so I'm going to enter that. And it doesn't, I mean, you could enter some blank fields. Um, and I'll just show you what happens here. If you don't enter things, so if you click Add, it'll say description of this event is required. So um, this is a
Okay, so now it'll say event created up at the top, and you'll see under my events under review, I have test event. So under review just means that it's been processed, but it hasn't been approved. And right now, um, I can just say that most events are approved. Um, we're working on updating our approval process. When we currently or previously had the committees, the committees were engaged in um, event approval, and one thing we're trying to update um, is getting people engaged in that review process. So if anyone on the call is interested in being um, involved in event review and approvals, um, please reach out to us. There's a job posted under the um, initiative page that Kate um, previously pointed out. So the other page that I want to point out to you is the how to host a conference page, which is linked from, I can go back to make sure everyone saw that. On the um, AppSet conference page right here, it says how to host a conference. And this is, um, a resource page which has a lot of different information on our event types, planning, um, different roles and responsibilities you might want to consider when mapping out volunteer and um, engagement in the event, budgeting, um, sponsorship, um, and you can go down the list. There's a lot of information here to, to look at. Um, and not all of it would be applicable to every type of event, but the goal is to give you some guidance when getting started with an event at any level. So um, feel free to look that over and reach out to me or through the um, Contact Us form if you have any questions or need help in understanding something that isn't included in here. Um, one final note I would say is the a lot of the tools that we've pointed out um, and that I've just gone over are self-help. And so in that we um, leave it open to you to read at your convenience and organize and plan. The one piece that we um, would ask that you engage the staff, or I guess two things if in the course of planning an event are if you need a signed contract. If that's the case, you will need to reach out to us for a signature. Um, to protect our volunteers as well as liability for the foundation, we don't want our volunteers entering into any signed um, legal agreements on behalf of the foundation. So please send those our way and we will get them signed as soon as possible. And secondly, um, if you um, have financial um, transactions. So incoming money or outgoing expenses that you need paid, um, please reach out to us about processing that. Um, we would ask that you run those through the foundation once again to protect you um, and protect us. And if you have any special um, needs in terms of special payment arrangements, we will try our best to facilitate that. Um, it, I guess if anyone has questions, I can answer those. Otherwise, I'll hand it back to Kate. <clears throat> All right. Okay, that was a lot of information covered in a fairly short period of time. Um, hopefully we've been able to point out some of the uh, enigmas that are associated with the wiki. Um, one of the cool things about the wiki is just that it is a wiki, which means that anybody in the community can click here to log in and create an account. Um, that's how you uh, you get your credentials to log in and edit the wiki. Um, so if there's something on this on our website that you feel could use improvement, needs updating, or you have something to add to it, or you find some wrong information, please feel free to log in 
and update the wiki. This is this is the community communication tool, and we, as a foundation, do our best to make sure that um, the materials are there, that the information that you need, whatever your role within the organization um, that you need to be successful, um, are available to you, and we try to keep it all together on the wiki. So, uh, wiki is a four-letter word. Hopefully, it's not a a negative four-letter word, and I hope that in the in the last hour or so we've been able to uh, clarify some of the the mysteries of the wiki. Um, so before we log off, if there are any questions or comments, um, any additional information, we must have done a really good job, or it is still so confusing. Nobody has questions. All right, well, this webinar was recorded, um, and it will be posted uh, hopefully by the end of the day today. We're also doing it again tonight. Um, and it, as Tom just pointed out, everybody is encouraged to edit the wiki. So again, if you find some information that you want to update or that you want to add or you think something's missing, um, just log in, create your account, and uh, edit away. So with that, I think we'll sign off, and if you have any additional questions later on, feel free to reach out through the Contact Us form, um, and any one of the staff would be happy to help you navigate to whatever it is that you need. All right, thank you. Thank you for joining.